So you notice I don't have a trombone in my hand today. Uh, this is a different type of video. It's a small tutorial to go over a MIDI interface that I've built in order to interpret MIDI signals from Logic Pro and turn a recording light of some type uh, on and off. So it's going to be broken up into two videos. The first part will go over the schematic and the hardware and the second video will go over the actual program or what's called an Arduino sketch that we load into the Arduino controller board we use to interpret these MIDI signals and uh, subsequently be able to control the recording light. So look out for that uh, second video. I use Logic Pro to record and the idea was to have a recording light that would turn on when I started recording and then turn off when I stopped recording. As it turns out, Logic Pro has a feature called Control Surfaces which provide this functionality. To set this up in Logic Pro, you'll want to go to the Logic Pro menu, choose Control Surfaces, and select Setup. Um, you can see that I already have the recording light control surface installed. If you don't see it here, then you'll want to go to the drop-down menu for New, select Install, and find it in the list of control surfaces, highlight it, and add it. Once it's added, you'll need to set up a number of parameters. The output port is important. Um, UM-1 happens to be the name of the MIDI cable, the USB to MIDI cable that I'm using to connect the MIDI interface to the Mac computer that runs Logic Pro. Um, this MIDI cable is solely for the purpose of connecting the Mac to the MIDI interface and doesn't connect to any other MIDI instruments. I do have other MIDI appliances connected, such as M-Track that I use in the audio recording. So you'll want to look for the name of the MIDI cable that's connecting the computer to the MIDI interface. The input port is not as important because the MIDI interface doesn't send any data back to Logic Pro. The module and model number are always recording light and they can't be changed. The version and the color uh, we do not, are unimportant. We don't need to change those. The MIDI status is important. We want to make sure we select Note On because that's one of the commands our program is going to be looking for to control the recording light. The MIDI channel is also important. We want to make sure the MIDI channel is on channel 2 because that's how our program is written. That's the channel it will be looking for the data on. Uh, the next two are data bytes that are sent by Logic Pro. Um, we don't use these particular two data bytes. They're for more advanced features. However, this third data byte must be at 127 because that is going to tell the controller board in our program to turn the recording light on. Once these are parameters are set up, you should be ready to interpret the MIDI data once you've built the MIDI interface and made all the proper connections. This is a block diagram of the entire system, starting with a Mac computer running Logic Pro here on the left, all the way through to a relay, which when closed will close the circuit and turn a recording light on, and when open will break the circuit and the light will go off. Logic Pro has the capability of sending a MIDI signal when recording is started and started or stopped and will build a MIDI interface to connect the MIDI signal to an Arduino controller board and will program this board to interpret those MIDI signals to appropriately turn the relay on and off and subsequently turn the recording light that's connected to the relay on and off. In order to get the signal from the Mac with running Logic Pro to the interface, we need a USB to MIDI cable. It has a USB connection on this, on this side that goes into the computer and then a MIDI in and MIDI out connector on this side. In this schematic of the MIDI interface that we'll build, uh, pin 4 and pin 5 correspond to the MIDI connector. We'll go over this in much more detail in another video. Suffice it to say that an important component in the MIDI interface is this 6N138 chip. This is an opto-isolator and allows the circuit receiving the MIDI signal to be physically separated from the side of the circuit that sends the signal to the controller board. This helps prevent ground loops and provides for a nice clean signal into our Arduino controller board. 
a few important connections, which we'll see again, uh, but I wanted to highlight here in the block diagram are the output from the MIDI interface going into pin 2 of the Arduino controller board and the output of the Arduino controller board going into the same smart relay at this pin. Also notice that the power supply of the opto isolator is provided by 5 volts generated from the Arduino controller board. In the interest of time, I won't go over the parts list extensively. It's really provided just for reference. Um, resistors can be small quarter watt type. Uh, the Arduino Uno R3 Plus board can be bought at the OSEP.com site or you can usually find them in the store at Fry's. The Sane Smart 2 channel 5 volt relay module can be found on Amazon. Um, you'll need a 9 volt DC wall adapter power supply to power the Arduino Uno board and generally you can find these at Fry's or other electronic shops. Um, they'll have variable voltages sometimes that you can switch between several voltages. They'll have several tips, uh, barrel sized tips, so that you can connect into different barrel adapters and find one that fits the Arduino board. Uh, the recording light itself, any light will really work, uh, preferably something with a low voltage so you don't have to run 110 volt AC into the MIDI enclosure or relay. Uh, although I do believe the same smart two-channel relay will handle up to 110 volts or greater uh, voltage, AC voltage. I just used a battery-operated red emergency light I found cheap at Fry's, but you might want something a little bit fancier. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual schematic diagram for the MIDI interface. We'll start over here on the left with the MIDI connector itself. This MIDI connector is oriented such that we would be looking at the back of a female MIDI, con MIDI connector where the wires are attached with the notch at the top um, and the female receptacle where you'd connect the MIDI cable in is actually pointing back toward in the screen. So we're looking at the back of the MIDI connector as it faces us. You want to connect pin 4 of the MIDI connector through the 220 ohm resistor to the banded side of the diode. Now this is important that you connect it to the side of the diode that has the band on it. The side opposite the band on the diode then connects to pin 5 and that circuit is then connected to pins 2 and 3 of the opto isolator chip 6N138. The Arduino controller board operates on 9 volts, uh, which is supplied by the wall-mounted power supply we discussed in the parts list. The Arduino controller board has its own barrel-shaped power connector already built on, and generally when you buy these wall-mounted power supplies, they'll come with a variety of tips so you can find the one that fits into the barrel connector on the Arduino. We use 5 volt output generated by the Arduino to power the opto isolator through pin 8 and also to provide general power to the same smart 2 channel relay board on the voltage in pin. These two components also have to be tied into the ground of the Arduino board to complete the circuit. So we have a ground pin on the Arduino board and we want to connect that to pin 5 um, on the opto isolator and pin 7 through this 10,000 ohm resistor and then connect the grounds together between the controller board and the same smart relay board. Other important connections on the Arduino controller board, the output of the um, the opto isolator through pin 6 connects into pin 2 on the Arduino controller board. Now if you're doing some research and you see some other MIDI interface schematics that connect in with the Arduino you may see them coming into pin 0. We use pin 2 because the program or the sketch we wrote for the Arduino specifically states that the input is going to be on pin 2, so it's important you connect it into pin 2. The output is through pin 7, and that goes to the in 
of the SANE Smart 2 channel relay board. So when a high voltage signal comes out of pin 7, it'll signal the relay board to close the relay circuit and complete the circuit for the light bulb and its power source. Okay, what I've done here is I've taken select pictures of the main components of the MIDI interface and I've included a copy of the schematic here on the bottom. So on the left is the MIDI connector. We're looking at it from the back. Uh, as I mentioned, that's how it's oriented in the schematic. So this is pin 4 and the pin 4 connection goes out through the resistor to the banded side of the diode. This is pin 5. This is connected to the diode opposite the banded side, and these two are connected into the opto-isolator. The Arduino controller board has a barrel-shaped power connector. Um, this, the barrel-shaped power um, supply tip connects in at the end here. It's also got a USB port. This is so you can connect the uh, Arduino controller to a computer through USB in order to upload the program or what's called a sketch. Once the program or sketch is loaded into the Arduino, the USB can be disconnected and the Arduino retains the program so the, com the computer doesn't need to remain connected. Uh, you'll notice that these are built in at the end of the Arduino board, so when you mount these in an enclosure, you're going to have to mount them near one end of the enclosure and cut openings so that you have access to power, the, power it through the wall-mounted power supply and then put in the USB cable to connect to your computer so that you can upload the program and edit it and modify it and re-upload it again and so forth. Here is the 5 volt that's supplied by the Arduino controller board. This is going to go out through to pin 8 of the opto isolator and also over to the VCC or voltage in of the SANE Smart. So we're going to go from 5 volts out to this VCC pin of the SANE Smart. To complete the circuit, we need to connect the ground. So here are two ground connectors from the Arduino controller board. One is going to go out and go to pin 5 of the opto isolator. The other one is going to go out and go to the ground pin, the ground pin of the same Smart 2 relay board. So a connection from the ground here on the controller board to the relay board. The input to the Arduino controller board is through pin 2. So we come out of pin 6 on the opto isolator and go into pin 2 pin 2 here on the uh, on the controller board the output of the arduino controller board is pin 7 pin 7 comes out and goes to the in 1 pin the in 1 pin on the same smart 2 relay board so pin 7 out to in 1 pin when a voltage signal is sent from the controller board to this in one pin, it'll close the relay, and that closed relay will complete a circuit that is connected between these two screw connectors. So one side of the recording light will be connected to this screw connector, the other side will be connected to a battery or other power, power source, which is then subsequently connected to this screw connector. So when this relay closes, it completes the circuit and the light goes on. Hopefully the video provided some food for thought into building your own simple MIDI interface and controlling a recording light. doesn't have many advanced features, uh, but really it's the uh, do-it-yourself component that's fun. So if you do build the MIDI interface, then be on the lookout for the second video, which goes really line by line through the program, or what's called the Arduino sketch that we load into the Arduino controller board to make the project work.